Feral hogs are an ecological train wreck. Feral hogs are competitors for native wildlife. They're nest predators for anything that lays an egg on the ground. And they're a significant source of mortality for sensitive species and endangered species. Ossabaugh Island is just over 25,000 acres, of which less than half is high ground. The wild pig removal program on Ossabaugh Island uses trapping, hunting, and uh, dogs to remove the wild pigs. We do seven hunts each year. Five of those are deer and hog hunts, and two of those are hog only hunts. Combined with the hunts and the uh, technicians we have out here removing hogs, we remove between 2,500 and 3,000 hogs annually. Prior to Asaba Island's wild pig removal program, sea turtle nests were depredated at a rate of over 30% annually. Today, sea turtle nests on the beaches of Asaba are depredated at a rate of less than 5% annually. Removing the wild pigs, constantly keeping pressure on them, we've seen vegetation rebound, increase in deer weights, and very few sea turtle nests depredated by wild pigs. One of the increasing problems we have here in Mississippi as far as agricultural damage and forestry damage are wild hogs in our state. An awful lot in corn at all stages. From the time it's planted, they'll almost go right down the road just picking up the seed. Once it begins to mature, they get in, they knock it down, they eat the ears. And peanuts. Today in Mississippi, we've probably got about 20,000 acres of peanuts. Hogs love peanuts. We have a rifle in the tractor cab. I've learned the hard way. You drive up to them on, with a tractor, and you're sitting there with nothing but a pocket knife to throw at them. We've learned to just keep the rifle in the tractor. They will root up corn seed. They'll root up peanut seed. They'll just go right down the road digging them up. But now you can see where they paw up the plants, eat the peanuts off, and in the process, the plant dies when they pull the tap root out of the ground. These peanuts need harvesting. I just haven't got to them yet. These will be harvested for green peanuts. We had problems here back in the spring, but we were able to control them by harassment and traps to get a stand of peanuts. And it seems like if the peanuts can ever get out of the ground and growing, they'll leave them alone for about 100 days. So initially they want to root up the seed. But if we can get past that point, get a stand, even with corn, they'll generally leave the crop alone for a period of time until they have something to eat. We're standing in an area that I would say was at least 50% damaged here on this part of the field. In the spring, when they root up all your seed and you have, have to replant, you can consider that a 100% loss. And we have lost entire fields. They may not dig up every seed, but they dig up the vast majority of them. You just, just well off to replant. Now this loss right here, we're probably talking a greater economic loss, but it's done, the die's cast, it's too late to do anything right now. We're gonna dig these peanuts in the next 10 days and salvage what we've got left and try again next year. But we ultimately are gonna to have to control the hogs. They're not leaving until there's nothing left for them to eat. The rooting is what really does a lot of damage. If we ride these four wheelers over them, we'll have to go at a slow rate just to keep them from being thrown out. The pasture is just completely ruined. You cannot even run a bush hog over it. There's no more cutting hay out here until we completely disc it. And when we do that, we're gonna have fresh ground inviting them back in, and it'll take us probably two years to uh, recoup this land. We've seen the damage here on our place particularly in areas where we planted young pine trees. We've had them go in and root up new planted plantations of pine. Then we go into the hardwood areas and the river bottoms, and we see the root in there. And it's very obvious after two, three years that we're not having the regeneration and new growth 
of those desirable hardwoods that we so much like for two reasons. Number one, is they begin to sprout up, they're rooted up and killed by the hogs. Number two, when that acorn hits the ground, the hog's probably gonna be the first one there looking for it. The problems that wild swine will present uh, if, in fact, we're challenged with trying to eradicate a, a, another disease uh, will be perhaps overwhelming, perhaps insurmountable. There are a number of infectious agents that are shared between humans and animals. We call them zoonotic diseases, probably the most common of which worldwide is leptospirosis. Uh, it's a bacterial disease that uh, affects the, the kidneys and the liver and the reproductive tract of animals, people as well as uh, wild hogs. Uh, and people that come into contact with blood or urine uh, from affected hogs can contract the disease. A real concern would be brucellosis uh, because it is a chronic debilitating disease uh, in people and it's one that's reasonably difficult to diagnose and unfortunately most physicians aren't thinking in terms of some of these uh, fairly odd diseases that people who deal with wildlife routinely uh, are exposed to. Probably the best way to protect yourself against uh, virtually any diseases uh, is to use personal protective equipment. Uh, if you're a hunter uh, and dressing swine, wearing plastic gloves is a great idea. There are a couple of rules of population medicine, uh, and one is that most problems are introduced. So by moving wild pigs around, we never quite know what diseases or conditions we may be introducing to an area. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the pig, it may be on the parasites that are on the pig. Both ticks and mites and lice uh, can transmit diseases around. Uh, so the threat to either other wild animals in an area, to our domestic animals that may uh, inhabit a field that these wild swine may be in, really pose a great risk uh, of introducing diseases into an area that haven't been there in the past. There are a number of diseases that are shared between what we call cloven-hoofed animals. Pigs have two main toes that they walk on, like cattle, and like deer. A major concern are some of the foreign animal diseases, the vesicular diseases they're called. Foot and mouth disease is probably number one on the list. Foot and mouth disease was eradicated in the United States in 1929. It cost us uh, tens of millions of 1929 dollars to get rid of that disease. Uh, and that's a disease that uh, a number of years ago occurred in Great Britain cost them nearly $11 billion to eradicate from a country not a third the size of the United States. And unfortunately, that disease is shared between pigs and cattle, deer. So if it became reintroduced in the United States, it could be extremely difficult, even if we're possible, to clean out the United States of this disease once again. Pseudorabies is another disease that's actually herpes virus type 1 of pigs, and we have eradicated it from our commercial hog operations in the United States, but some small percentage of feral hogs have pseudorabies and have experienced pseudorabies. It is a disease that will kill young animals, but older animals can harbor the virus and shed it, and unfortunately it does cross some species lines. Fortunately, it doesn't cross species lines into humans, so it's not a zoonotic disease, but it will kill cattle and it will kill dogs. It doesn't take long for people to be losing their pets who are members of the family to recognize how big a problem that this just might be.